Okay, um, I think we're going to start now. Um, but please feel free to continue to eat. Um, we have a lot of subs, so please um, eat as much as you want. Uh, my name is Timmy Hathcock. This is Ryan Nichols. We appreciate you guys coming here. I want to let you know that this is being recorded live. Um, it's being uploaded right now on YouTube. So we can forward the link to you guys if you want to view it later or when fellow coworkers to view it. Um, we'll just give us your email and we'll forward you the link to YouTube so you can watch it later. Um, anyway, again, thank you for coming and. How do you want to do the questions? Do you want to do the questions in the middle or at the end? I'll leave it open at any time. Does that sound good? Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to be here. Just continue to eat and make me more hungry as I watch you eat. My name is Ryan Nichols, and I'm here to talk about the certificate program for Drury University in Emergency Management. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about myself, and then we'll kind of go into some of the components of this. And most of uh, what I'd like to talk about today is just emergency management in general. So if you, if, you, if you work in this, if you're experienced in it, I hope I don't bore you too much. Uh, I think there will be some interesting facts either way. Um, in my previous life, I started out as a registered nurse, worked at, at Cox South up in Springfield, and then uh, converted over into emergency management. I uh, was able to get a, a, a graduate degree, master's degree in emergency management out of Oklahoma State. Uh, my first event really that I got really and fell in love with emergency management was, was Hurricane Katrina. Went down there and spent several weeks down there. And then uh, I got employed uh, through some small town endeavors until I eventually ended up at Springfield, Missouri. I was Springfield Green County Office of Emergency Management Director for uh, right about eight years. Uh, a few months ago, I left that. I left that job and took an opportunity in St. Louis doing emergency management for, for Washington University up there. So I still am in emergency management, love it. I've changed from the, the local government to uh, higher institution, higher education, and there's a lot of really good application across the board. What we're going to talk about today is why emergency management is what it is, why it's important, and kind of why I have such a passion and, and love for it. And, Hopefully we can share some of that through the certificate program. I'm going to share a short video here with you. And as you watch this video, it's a little humorous. It's not, it's not real, so uh, I think you'll pick up on that fairly quick. But in emergency management, there's a lot of misunderstandings of exactly what emergency management is or what, what we do. One of the most common questions we get when I, or I get when I tell people I'm in emergency management is, like, well, what do you do? You sit around and watch radar all day and wait for the storm to come? And so there's a lot of really different things we do when the storms aren't coming. As you watch this video, I want you to think of that one or two words. How would you summarize emergency management? How would you better organize a lot of what this video portrays as a problem among many different agencies? Too much math for me. Right, well, that's the same as a 245 a month. What would you do? What does she like, Sam? Here's your saver. I'm not interested in her. He's quite the salesman. One of his many talents. Subject approach. We got it. Do I have to decide today? No, of course not. Just uh, take the form and let us know. This form will have a lot of information. This isn't boring. Excuse me. Uh, what's the box? 401. The key doesn't turn. 401. What's your name? Nelson. It was okay yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, we had to change the lock. It was broken. It wasn't broken yesterday. And your card's out of date. There's no address. This is my address. That's why I rent the box. Well, we need to know where you work then. Right here. Who the hell is that? He followed the subject in. Check face ID. It's been a long time. Don't you remember? We met at the conference at Suleiman's. Oh, yes. No match yet. Is that a gun? Uh, sure looks like it. Our visitor has a weapon. As soon as I'm done with my business, I need to talk to you about something. If you are not too busy, would you like to get some coffee? I could go down the street. Uh, sir, we need an emergency contact, an employer, friend. 
Oh, Mr. Nelson, just give us a name. So what was the problem there? Communication? Communication. The key word we look for, that is a key word. There's always communication, but the key word I always look for in that is coordination. And you can apply that to a lot of different scenarios and responses, organized or pre-planned or not. But when we look at any event that happens these days, a lot and a lot of agencies are involved. And it takes a lot of pre-planning and coordination to hopefully let it move along smoothly. So what exactly is emergency management? It's utilized really as an umbrella term. But if you think about it, I'm going to point this here in a couple of bullet points, is we, we all do emergency management right now. You may not have it as a profession, but you're a father, you're a businessman, you go to church, you go to school, whatever you may do, there are concepts of emergency management you're already doing. You already hopefully think about or look at the weather. You already do a, a, a little bit of pre-planning. If you're a, a, a parent, especially a mother, you know how to multitask and bring all those disasters into one. We, my wife and I are the proud parents of a bunch of little minions, and, and when we do family vacations, she's the incident commander, and she's the planning section chief, and she's the operations section chief. She does everything because she knows what emergency management is. But really, emergency management is this umbrella term that captures a, a wide range of people and organizations. So it doesn't just apply to local government. It applies across the board. So the, it really what emergency management does is addresses the questions of what do we do about hazards and disasters. Uh, it's all hazards, all phases, and all actors. So if you think about where do you find emergency management, the, the first thing you think of, a lot of people what they think of is they think of FEMA. They think of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And those are some emergency management professionals doing it across the country. But if you really look at it, and if you really dig into it, and it's something I've recently have just learned, even with my job change, is that emergency management applies in many aspects. You can see it at all federal, at all levels of government, from federal, military to state to local. Uh, I was talking earlier with Howe County uh, emergency management uh, workers there, and a lot of that they do. Uh, you look at it from the business side, business contingency. There's a really big effort right now to, to increase the business continuity momentum that's out there. When you think about business continuity, we think a lot about disasters. We think about that first impact of when the tornado hits or the earthquake hits, everybody jumps in to help. You got, you got police, you got fire, you got EMS. But the question is always asked, if I'm impacted, if I'm hit, the dust settles, the sirens turn off, how do I, re, how do I reopen my business? How do I go back to my desk and carry on critical business operations. That's, the, uh, that's a, a key missing component across the country is business continuity is when we go back to our desk, if we have one to go back to, how do we sustain ourselves? About 75% of businesses that are impacted by disasters are not open a year later that do not have a business continuity plan. So a lot of that emergency management preparedness and planning applies to the business world. Hospitals all have, I won't say all, but that's a growing uh, profession now within hospitals is to have their own dedicated emergency managers. Where I work at Washington University with Barnes Jewish, they have their own hot, they have their own emergency management. St. Louis Children's has their own emergency manager. Uh, St. Louis Pharmacy has their own emergency manager. There's a lot of emergency management just within the healthcare profession. Power and utility providers are very popular in this, and then you get into healthcare, industrial facilities, schools, universities, where I'm at, and a lot of independent contractors. So there's a lot of application out there beyond just government use or even local government use. 
And so why is emergency management important? I think everyone would agree, I hope you would agree, if you look at anything as far as news or national, uh, the 24-7 news broadcast that we have nowadays really brings it to light over the last few years. But disasters are not going away. Now argue, if you will, for or against, are they getting worse, are they getting more frequent? That's a good discussion to have, but they're there and they're going to continue to happen. I think anyone would come to a consensus on that. So what the problem is, though, is we have these increasing disasters, but we also have a lot of cultural living that we do that doesn't help the cause. Our population is increasing. We're, we're really living more in hazard-prone areas. We have a lot of deterioration of our, of our infrastructure that kind of escalates the, the, the challenge that we have, and a lot of vulnerabilities that are out there. Our economic losses are not going away. Something that we always think of, but you always think of natural hazards. We always think of tornadoes, earthquakes, floods, ice storms, snowstorms, all those things we dealt with. Man-made hazards are just as real. Technological hazards are just as real. I know back in Greene County, we had about 400 facilities that stored hazardous materials. I know in St. Louis, they have about right at that level. Interesting here is 123 plants across 24 states have enough dangerous material if released to kill at least a million people. There's a lot of demand to really plan and mitigate, well first mitigate so that doesn't happen and then plan, prepare, and respond in case it does happen. In the United States over the last few years, if you go on FEMA's website, FEMA makes official disaster declarations, those presidential declarations, when, they, when, they, when the disaster has crossed a certain formula, that's a threshold that they have, and there has to be so much damage to be done, and when it crosses that, then they consider it out an official disaster. There are a lot of disasters that go on in this world, in this country, that never hit that threshold. But just those that hit that threshold, they average about a disaster a week over the last 10 years that hit the threshold. If you look at everything below that, you've had, I'm sure, a lot of events within your own county, within your own region, that never got that presidential declaration. That's still considered a disaster. If my house burns, that's a disaster for me. And had I done a, some family emergency management, it could maybe prevented or responded to. But that's a disaster. That's catastrophic. But it's it didn't make the presidential. So there's a lot of different levels of disasters that we have to be aware of that are, are occurring that don't even make the mark. So if you look about how people are affected by disasters, the number of people affected by disasters has more than quadrupled since the 1970s. And that's in large part for a lot of increase in disasters that we believe is happening and also a lot of people moving to live in areas where disasters are, are, are more prone or more likely to occur. So if you look at this from an economic perspective, it's, it, it's overwhelming. I mean, the numbers don't even really mean numbers anymore when he's talking to billions of dollars. But if you think about it, even at the Japan earthquake that happened in 2011, earthquake slash tsunami, close to $250 billion in damage just for that one event. Just for that one event that lasted the earthquake for a minute or two and the tsunami that followed, just that one event, how it changed the world of not only that country but the whole world and how that impacted all of us here across the, across the country. You can see other examples that fall right along with that. We believe in emergency management, good emergency managers, educated, schooled, following best practices, we believe that this won't go away, but that it can be reduced and that we can impact and that we can mitigate the economic loss, the infrastructure loss, the human loss, which is the most important. We believe it can be improved with good practices. So what what we've kind of concluded is all these things are happening. We're getting a lot more disasters, a lot more money is being spent. So what is emergency management doing wrong? Why aren't we not just getting it yet? I think we are getting it, but I think there's a lot more to get, if you know what I mean. Uh, I remember, if you remember back in 2008, I believe it was, we had a horrific uh, tornado season across the country. I mean, the, the average number of tornado deaths in 2008 was three or four times that one year was three or four times the average. If you remember, that was the year that up in Iowa where a Boy Scout camp got hit by a tornado and several people died. And I remember asking that question to myself. Here we are in 2008. Here we are 
seven years post 9-11. Here we are, a couple years, a few years past post-Katrina, and we still see basic causes of death or damage from practices that we know better, that we can do better things better about. So the profession of emergency management has been growing and improving over the last decade or so to capture some of these practices to make things better across the country. Because really, and FEMA does very good at this, really what happens is the, 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 the saying is disasters start local and disasters end local. When the state and feds come in to support you in between, they may come in, they may help you, and then they may leave. But it starts right here in West Plains and Howe County or Springfield or St. Louis. It starts with us, and when they leave, it ends with us. And so when we can get an organized profession that can bring best practices to West Plains and Springfield and St. Louis and Ava, and we can bring those best practices home, then the impact is that much greater at the local level. So there's a great need, what we believe, to have a professional emergency management cadre position for the 21st century to chat, to take on increased challenges that we have. So things need to change. Here's a, a quote. Human history becomes more and more erased between education and catastrophe. And a Congressional Natural Hazards Caucus said the time has come for a new national approach to natural hazards. And that was prior to 9-11. I'm going to show you another short video here, it's just a few seconds, but I want you to think about what's happening with this in this family and be honest with yourself if this would be, I know you probably haven't had similar discussions in your own home, but be honest if, you, if this would be a somewhat of a similar mindset, because I know it would be for us in our home, if this is something that would apply to you in your family, your church, or your school. <laughs> This isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Now, when the event happens, when the tornado comes, a lot of times we just have to improvise and make things work. But it is not an uncommon mindset to just figure it out when it happens. I remember uh, when I was going through school, if you remember May 4th, 2003, up in, over in southwest part of the state, we had a tremendous tornado outbreak. And uh, that's where the city of Stockton got destroyed, uh, Pierce City, several, several communities were just leveled. I remember I had some really good friends in Stockton, and they were trying to get to people, but there was so much debris, so much vegetation across the roads, they just couldn't get to check on people. And they, didn't ha they all ran out of their gas and their chainsaws weren't working. And some guy showed up with a truckload of gas and chainsaw oil. And he said, I remember his quote, he says, it was like he showed up with a truck full of gold. And that's all it was, was chainsaw gas and, and some bar lube and what he needed to get the chainsaws running. And so that hit me when I was thinking about that is, if, that was, if that's worth gold in a disaster, Think of all the basic things that are worth gold and disaster that we could have readily available with some very basic pre-planning efforts. Food, water, shelter, a lot of those things that we know about can be done and mitigated and made life, make life a lot easier. So emergency management, our goal is, and I say our goal as, as I, as I kind of humorously, humorously represent the whole profession, which I, I technically don't, but we're trying to become a profession. We're trying to take best practices, both from an academic perspective, from a professional perspective, from boots on the ground, we're in the field, this is what worked, this is what didn't work, and we're trying to package that up and share it across the country so we all can learn from it. So profession technically is a vocation or occupation required advanced education and training and involving 
intellectual skills as medicine, law, theology, engineering, teaching. Why couldn't emergency management be part of that? Why couldn't emergency management be a profession with more respect and value and with such comes more appropriate salaries and more adequate budgets to, the, to do the job that we need to do? I was in uh, St. Louis City a month ago at a, they had a uh, citywide disaster preparedness committee meeting and represented in that committee as, he went, as we went out and did introductions, there was uh, more private and university representatives in that city meeting than, what, than there was from public safety agencies. And, the, and the, the host of the meeting stopped and made a comment. He said, he said, five years ago, you would not have seen the diversity that we have today. But these were professions, professionals employed by their private employer, pro employed by the universities and others that were representing their industry at the citywide emergency management meeting. And you can see over the last few years how that has become a common practice now is to have that profession of emergency management more readily available across the scope. So professionals, they're educated. Uh, emergency management in the late 90s started to really develop itself as a profession with some higher education. They outlined some emergency management competencies that really kind of set the groundwork to, to define an emergency management as a profession. We want to know and understand what the hazards are. One of the courses we teach in the bachelor's program for emergency management is the course that I've been teaching. It's solely dedicated just to hazard identification. We spend a whole semester analyzing in detail what causes a disaster to happen, what's its frequency, and how do we prevent it. And you get into things like volcanoes and earthquakes and tornadoes, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. We all know that when the supercell comes that a tornado could happen. But the science behind it, the mitigation efforts behind it are so fascinating to me. I'm just, I'm a weather fanatic anyway, but when you, when you expand it out to all hazards, it really becomes something that really captivates you to learn more about. We want, to, we want to have some analytical thinking about not repeating the same mistakes every time a disaster happens and actually building on and improving ourselves from those events. Synthesize the information and communicate well. We, can, we as emergency managers are one of the most misunderstood professions, but in, it, be it local government or be it where I'm at in universities, it's my job to communicate the value of what I'm trying to do with an emergency management because all I do, if you remember from the very beginning, all I do is coordinate. But I can do it in a way that makes the whole university or makes the whole community or makes my whole business just kind of flow a little smoother when the event happens. It takes leadership. It takes management skills, networking, understanding social impacts, dealing with folks that have uh, helping folks that have functional challenges or needs. They're there. We have to help them. We need to help them. We should help them. And how do we address those in our plan? Animals. A lot of folks are very attached to their household animals. Something I years ago didn't take serious enough and now learned that it's important to folks to have those household animals taken care of and we need to address those type of issues. Problem solving, diversity, creativity, all this emergency management. You look at that triad. Really we want training, experience and education. And really, it's that, it's that that education point that myself and my partner, we've, we've, we've teamed up with Drury, and we believe we can make this education point uh, a really effective component of emergency management. So how do we get there as a profession? This came uh, from a past president. There's an International Association of Emergency Managers. Uh, it's a very good association if you ever want to get emergency management as far as part of a profession. This is the premier association to get connected with. A past president once said, emergency management today is a constant educational process. And if the local emergency manager does not wish to continue their education, they will find they have been left behind and are ineffective in their community. So our goal is, as anyone and everyone is getting emergency management, and it's not so much emergency management as a full-time job, although that would be ideal if you really love it. But emergency management oftentimes is that second hat. It's that other duties as a sign. But if you, even to do it as other, other duties assigned, if you take it seriously and become the lifelong learner in it, you can really grow and protect the, the community that you're responsible for. I know this is kind of long, but it was a very critical component. FEMA has established a higher education program where all the universities across the country get together and they build the emergency management curriculum across the country. So it's kind of rising together and there's a consistency of how we're educating emergency management professionals. 
that program said a goal of FEMA is to encourage and support the dissemination of hazard disaster, emergency management related information in colleges and universities across the United States. We believe that in the future more and more emergency managers and government as well as in business and industry will come to the job with college education that includes a degree in emergency management. We also believe that in order to build disaster re resistant and resilient communities, a broad range of college students and professionals need courses that introduce them to hazards, risk, vulnerability, disasters, and what to do about them. So um, a couple of, now we talk about that's kind of the academic version, the people in their ivory towers that are telling us how the, how the perfect world would look. But we also have a, a practitioner that says higher education is that balance between experience and an emergency management career. The time will come when you aren't in, when you aren't an emergency manager if you don't have the, that degree. You can't just say you're an, an engineer or a lawyer. You can't just walk in the door and say you're an emergency manager. So if you look at some statistics here, uh, back in the 90s when emergency management started to get some traction, FEMA had a very uh, progressive director at the time in the 90s. His name was James Lee Witt. And he really did some really good things for FEMA, really pushed them into the modern age of what emergency management should be. Well, with that push came a lot of uh, explosion within emergency management and higher education. In 1994, across the country, there were only four programs that taught anything related to emergency management. In 2012, there was over 200 programs of about a 4,900% increase. So as you can see on the pie chart, a lot of them haven't been around for a real great uh, extent of existence. But those that have, the majority of these in the 2012, they're not doing this individually within their own silos. The program is building and coming together as one component across the country. So real uh, specifically, just what we have here in Missouri, and I'm going to highlight just the Drury component because that's the part I'm most interested in. Uh, but Drury uh, started up a little while ago uh, three types of programs within emergency management. The certificate program is what we're talking about here today uh, based out of this office. Uh, we also are putting, have put together an associate's degree and, uh, and a bachelor's degree. The fortunate thing of that is my counterpart and myself have kind of organized and built these programs that tie into each other uh, pretty darn close. And so the certificate program, as you go through that program, uh, in fact we use the same textbook a lot of the similar course material launch right into the associates and the bachelor's program. And so if there's some, if it's the level of involvement is not really sure what it is or I'm not full time or there's just uh, other duties as assigned or something I just want to explore to see if it's something I would enjoy, the certificate program is the perfect start for that because it'll give you kind of a taste of what's out there as a whole for emergency management and then if you want that it's kind of a stepping stone to launch into further degree programs if you so desire. So the bottom line is, and this was a, a good quote that we really like, is our communities desperately need someone who can articulate a persuasive and defendable case for disaster prevention and emergency management to top elected and appointed officials. We need someone that when they go in front of the mayor and then they go in front of the TV camera and they go in front of their chief executive officer of their business when they go in front of the superintendent of the school or the dean of the university that they have the reputation the professionalism to articulate the problem and the fix and that's based on best practices of what we learn within the emergency management profession. So how do we get there emergency managers? We're promoting a higher education and keeping with the reputation of all the other programs Drury has the opportunity to have the premier emergency management program in the state. We believe we can make it one of the best across the country. Basically the curriculum, within emergency management we say there's four phases of emergency management, two before and two after the disaster. Mitigation preparedness all occur before the event happens and the response and recovery afterwards. And We try to really get into that. So the meat of it is specifically this outline here is the course outline for the certificate program is broken up into three courses, three classes. Uh, it's, about, it's a month per class and so to go through the certificate program to have your official certificate in emergency management uh, would take three months to complete. 
Uh, the first month outlines the basic emergency management principles and practices. We do a brief overview of the history, concepts, role of emergency management. And what I really like, this is really a big push of my partner, is the certifications and accreditations. Because really, a profession takes certification, takes a mark, a standard, that, a threshold that you've crossed. And there's some really good certifications out there for individuals and or for programs. And so if you saw at the beginning behind my name, I, I like to proudly show off the CEM is a Certified Emergency Manager. It's a national certification that you can acquire through a few years of experience and, and some other things that you have to do. But it's a challenge to get. It's not easy. It's not, it's not, it's not pencil whipping. But when you do get it, you're among a, a group of, of a few thousand people in the country that have achieved that credentialing, that certification, to say that they are an, an official emergency manager. We talk about that in the certificate program and help you do that. In fact, my partner is on the National Review Board for that certificate program. So he's very familiar with how it works and how to build it and how to get people through that program, through that cert certification. We talk a lot about accreditations. There's an, one official emergency management accreditation program known as EMAP. And you as a, as a program within your business or your government can achieve that. It takes years to do, but when you achieve it, you're among the few that have it. The second month is probably, I think, is one of the more fun months to have to really build into the certificate program. We talk about disasters. I'm a weather freak. I love to go and watch weather. love to learn about disasters. love to learn case studies. If there's something fascinating to read, it's a disaster case study. It'll break your heart, but you really can learn what happened in Japan and what happened in Chile. And you can compare the, the Haitian earthquake to the Chilean earthquake. It was fascinating that if you take those case studies is they had about the same Richter intensity of an earthquake. But look at the damage in Chile and look at the damage in Haiti and why the difference. Why hundreds of thousands died in Haiti and only a few in, in Chile. Why the damage of, of the infrastructure and the buildings so intense, so heartbreaking in Haiti and not so much in Chile. Why did that culture exist to allow that to happen? And how do we make that better? It's really quite fascinating to do. Hazard ID mitigation, and then how do you write plans? And then we get into disaster, really specific business recovery and business continuity. There's some key aspects and components of how to do that. We won't have time in the certificate program to really get into the guts of how you do a business continuity plan, but it outlines the highlights, and then it uh, really sets the pace for further expansion if you so desire. Then the third month is put into action. We always say, uh, well, actually, we don't. We always quote General Eisenhower from World War II, where he said, "Plan uh, plans are important, but planning is indispensable." And what did he mean by that? He was the same guy that said, uh, "We love to plan, but you usually don't use them when you go into battle." So why do you do it? Because the process of creating that paper document is where the value is. You really bring people together and you plan in, you're planning how you're going to respond to that disaster. Well, in this phase, the third, is we test it. We, we really go into action and we see how does it work. And I guarantee you, you will find flaws in every, in every test, in every real event. How do you test it? How do you build your incident command system? How do you run an emergency operations center? And then some social aspects of emergency management. There are several of our components that we pull in some FEMA certificates into this certificate program. So not only will you leave with a jury online certificate, uh, but you'll also have some FEMA certificates under your belt when you complete the course. And hopefully that would launch you into further training. There are a lot of good free training courses out there that FEMA offers, some online study courses that we complement and work with. But uh, we really would advocate the, the networking and the brainstorming and the discussion-based uh, component you can have within the certificate program uh, that will be offered. I brought this just for a show and tell. All three months, all the one course does utilize one textbook. We utilize it across all uh, 12 weeks. Um, it's a very good book. It gets into a lot of detail, but this is just the, the, the start or the face of the whole associates and bachelor's program that we get into that really goes into depth. You can build a whole course into one chat into each of those chapters that are out there. That's really the summary of what I was asked to kind of come and, 
and share with you and hopefully show a little passion for and, and encouragement for. Does anyone have any questions, comments, jokes, concerns? Pam. The question is, do you have to have your NIMS training before you start this? You do not have to have your NIMS training. In fact, we cover it in that third month under ICS. We cover some NIMS training. NIMS, for those that aren't familiar with that, is an acronym that stands for National Incident Management System. It's a very painful thing. Uh, it's been referred to as the golden calf that we all must worship in the world of emergency management. It's a good system. It works. It works very well. What the key to NIMS and, I, and Instant Command System is, is you need to make sure the system works for you and you don't change or modify what is effective for you to fill in boxes for the program. So we teach the principles and the really good concepts of ICS. We believe in it. When uh, we work the Joplin event, when we worked uh, our Ice Storm events, we've always used the Instant Command System. I believe it works very well, but you've got to structure it for Howell County, for West Plains, for your school. you got to structure it for you and not try to fill in boxes that really don't apply to you. But yes, you don't need it, and we'll actually address it in that third, in that third class. Other questions, comments, jokes, concerns, criticisms? Uh, the first one starts the end of July, July 28th, I believe is when it starts, and we're going to do one month per course, and so you'll be done three months later, uh, August, September, end of October. It's all done online. She's saying no way. It is or yes, it is not. Now the book is not our only thing we cover. We we piecemeal through this book. Ty and I are both my my partner Ty and I are both practitioners. We both have been in the field and continue to work in the field. So we like to brag that we believe we have the academic version, and we also like to try to try to put in the practitioner version. Uh, Ty also has his master's degree in it, and uh, actually started on his PhD in it. So he has a very strong concept of the academic side, but we both work on this. 50, 60, 70 hours a week, and so uh, there are additional readings that will be had in the course. It's not just from this textbook, but all those are free, and you can download or we provide copies of it, so you can get those, but um, there's a lot of really good material that we feel like that when you're done, A, you're going to feel comfortable in emergency management, B, we think, if, especially with Ty, he just has this natural passion for it. You just feel it over the over the blackboard airwaves. You can just see them uh, bleeding this stuff out. We think you'll find an enjoyment of what emergency management is and can be, and hopefully further your education and your professional career in it. What else? Sir? Sir? Perfect. Now, I'm not familiar with the university that you provide. The university is a subspecialty from the university. Go to Memphis, Colorado, 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 Colorado. Is it what I'm sorry? The company runs. Okay. Company runs Service Master University. Okay. And you have to be a franchisee to go or work with them. And so, you know, several of us have come and taken several courses along that line. But, of course, ours deals more with the Emergency management in the home situation, commercial, that type of thing. You're talking about the county and the city. And what do you do? We're talking, uh, count, the question is uh, for Service Master has their own university and they teach a lot of courses specific to home and resident responses of, uh, for the Service Master franchises. We will talk um, not only about city and county, but our expansion is emergency management as a, as a program and concept in any application. So it could be utilized for private industry, private businesses that are uh, maybe store hazardous material and have a big safety program. Maybe for hospitals, universities, schools, uh, private and public. There's a lot of application that we're seeing emergency management being applied 
across the board. So our program is not tailored just for government, even though a lot of the reading comes from that. We think there's a lot of big benefit across the board. So we'll hit government. We'll hit business specific continuity of how to keep business doors open. We'll hit kind of the not only the response, but the mitigation, the preparedness for it phase of it. The immediate response, which I would assume is a lot of what your education is. And then the long-term recovery of the, some of the business practices and the rebuilding of, of, the, of the, the infrastructure after the event. I, I would personally, and that's just not a promotion for the program. I see benefit because it, we are trying to build a comprehensive um, coast to coast, cradle to grave. I mean, the full spectrum of what immersive management is in addition to that re immediate response mode. We have our Okay. Yeah. The certificates we have is going to be a the, the Drury certificate pro program. So you have a certificate from a very reputable university, and then we do have a handful of uh, FEMA certificates that you'll pull out of this also. Do you have any relationship? We do not have a relationship with insurance companies. No. Good questions. Yes, ma'am. It's a certificate program. If you want to make it equivalent, you could you could call it a, a three credit course. I mean, you're, it's a certificate program, but it's going to be about the level of a three credit course. I mean, there is reading and there is there is some work with it. I mean, we are going to we're going to make it challenging because when we want students like Ty and I's goal is when they leave and say they graduated from Drury, it's an automatic hire. That's our goal because they know they've got educated well. So we're going to make it. I'm not, I'm not going to say we're going to make it easy, but we're going to make sure you get through it and learn what we want you to learn. If you're willing to put in the time, that's all it takes. You put in the time and, and we'll, make, we'll get you through it uh, so you learn what, what the objectives are. If you work full time, I really, you can definitely do it with a full time job. The online component makes that very easy to work around. I mean. The way we typically schedule our weekly classes um, is you're, you're going to get, the full, like on Sunday night, Monday morning, you're going to get the whole week's assignments. Here's what you need to do this week, here's what you read, and here's what you need to turn in. And so you basically you have the liberty of five, six, if, if Tuesday didn't work for you, then you do it on Wednesday. There's some discussion boards. We like to get on and we post questions and, and try to challenge some students just to think about this issue. And then we expect students to, to read it and respond. So, so there's some discussion to have, there's some reading, and then there's small papers to write, usually one to two pages. Uh, we don't expect long, we don't expect big, big midterm papers of any sort. No, it's very manageable, I think. It's all on Blackboard. It's all on Blackboard. And I and I've used Blackboard with Drury now, and I've come to really like Blackboard. It's very easy to use. It's a very good program to use. Yes. That's a heck of a deal. Here just to learn professional students to learn.
I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. If you're not pursuing a degree, if it's in your profession, then it's going to be the forty-nine dollar cost. Do you touch on mold or asbestos or lead? We really don't get into the environmental type of aspects like that. No, we don't get that far in the weeds. I'm sorry. We stand more on the four phases and the applications across all four. Now, on the associate's degree or bachelor's degree, how closely related is the emergency management versus the environmental management? I am not familiar with environmental management, so I can't answer that. I'm not familiar with that program. I can tell you everything about emergency management. Are you familiar with environmental management? I've got two associates in environmental management, environmental studies, and then I have my bachelor's with environmental, the bachelor of science. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. 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 Question is, do we have a limit on how many people? Uh, is that more from our perspective? No. We'll open up the floodgates. Um, I mean, I guess that's kind of a big. I mean, a good course on Blackboard, you're talking 30, 30, 40 people would probably be tops because Ty and I try to stay very engaged on the on the discussions. We always try to turn the papers around within a few days so you can use it as a follow-up for your next ones. And so uh, probably 30 would probably be a good number, I would guess, but uh, I've never really pushed up to that limit yet. So we've been pretty comfortable about whoever wants to get in, we, we get them in. Any other questions? Those are excellent questions. No, no bad ones, just good ones. Tammy, anything else? I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you know how to in the folder, you can contact me. Um, or in the folder, there's also Lauren's uh, contact information. You can email her, call her. This is being on YouTube, so if you want to go back and look at it or report it to your supervisor or other members. Um, and Ryan, I guess, do you, if anyone has any questions for Ryan that we possibly didn't address, I can give you Ryan's contact information as well. Um, yes. Yeah. So, but anyway, if anyone's interested in signing up for the certificate or even the associate's degree or bachelor's degree, just contact us and we will help you with the process. Thank you for coming. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.